Hi, today we are going to see how to actually use MPC in real life by using the Scale Virtual Machine and the Mumba language. In previous lectures we have seen different protocols to realize the MPC functionality. Here we are going to walk through how to use Scale Mumba, the software that Scale even has developed and still continues to actively develop and which implements some of those protocols. Scale Mumba implements speeds for the uh, full social linear sequencing scheme MPC and also uh, Q2 linear sequencing scheme MPC protocols. In addition, it also implements um, some garbled circuit scheme from Hazais called Soryava's case and the ability to switch back and forth between linear sequencing schemes and garbled circuit. So scale member is actually composed of three parts. We have scale, which is the virtual machine, so to speak, which takes instruction in the form of bytecode. We then have scale, uh, which takes in compiled code and produces the bytecode, which will be fed to scale. And we eventually have member, which is a Python-like programming language in which we can write our programs and which will then be compiled to uh, assembly. Uh, in what follows, we will first give a brief overview of the scale architecture. Our main focus though will be on Mumba. We will walk through a few program examples so that at the end we have a clearer understanding of what programming for MPC requires. As you will see, we will have more constraints than in our, us than in our usual paradigms. Okay, let's talk about the scale architecture. So this diagram represents all the threads that scale spawns and that continuously run. This can slightly change depending on which protocol you use. Um, here we can see that we have uh, FHE factories and so uh, we did use that it's what's happening for speeds. Uh, so in this diagram we actually have two FHE factories and two online threads. So the number of FHA factories can be chosen at runtime and the number of online threads um, is dependent on which bytecode you run. Um, so the FHA factories actually produce the ciphertext and the zero knowledge proof which are associated to them uh, in the top gear protocol that we have seen uh, before. Um, you can see that like the output of the FHA FH factories are actually uh, fed into the uh, pre-processing threads which produce the correlated randomness we, uh, that are multiplication triples, square pairs, bit pairs and input masks. And in turn, uh, each of these uh, factories will feed one online thread. So as you can see, each online thread spawns its own pre-processing factories. Um, you also could notice that we produce a bits and a end, which stands for authenticated bits and authenticated ends. And these are also fed to the online threads and they are produced using oblivious transfer and used for the garbled circuit engine. The online threads that we have seen in the previous slide execute bytecode. Uh, the bytecode that we use kind of resembles the x86 assembly operations. Um, in Mumba, we have five uh, fundamental types with uh, S standing for secret and C standing for clear. We then have uh, ints, which uh, are elements of the underlying finite field, regint, which emulates 64-bit uh, -bit integers, and we also have secret bits. So let's have a quick overview of what's happening with memory. In scale, each thread has its own stacks uh, and registers, as you can see here, uh, for each of the fundamental types. So you can see we have S in, C in, S rigging, rigging, and S bit. Um, in addition to that, there is the main memory, which can be used to exchange information between the threads. Uh, we will see later on how to use the stacks and registers. So before we dive in and see how everything actually works, let's see a small example. So this is an example of private image classification with three parties. We have Bob, which holds an image and is going to extract the features of its image and uh, is going to then secret share those features. 
we also have an SVM server with some SVM parameters which uh, are also going to be secret shared and finally we have an analyst which is going to get the answer of the classification process so as you can see everything works as expected okay and that's basically the magic so that's the code in Mamba which uh, was used to, to do the classification and the example is taken from the paper EPIC Efficient Private Image Classification from Macri, Rotaru, Smart and Verkotoran in this section we will see how to use the basic data types and basic arithmetic to build slightly more complicated protocols um, so as explained before the basic data types in scale member are the C int and S int uh, for finite field arithmetic regint and S regint for emulating the unsigned lung of C and S bits which are um, basically here for emulating booleans so as we've seen before types that start with an s are secrets and this can be revealed which can be seen kind of like as a cast to their clear counterparts except that here to um, do the casting we actually require a specific protocol which is the opening protocol we have seen in previous courses so at the bottom of the slide you can see that this piece of member code uh, gets compiled into this piece of um, assembly code so here we actually initialize we initialize an, an s int with a value 42 which translate into loading the secret integer 32 into the register s0 and then we uh, reveal this uh, secret integer and put this into the value C which basic which which translates into uh, the start open command for S0 and the stop open 0 for C0 so S0 uh, was loaded with the value 42 but was a secret register and C0 will now be loaded with the value 42 but is a clear integer note that what happens behind the curtains of this opening protocol is dealt with by the scale virtual machine and so uh, as programmers of, of member we don't uh, need to really know what's happening here to make it seamless to work with the operators for the types are overloaded which means that when you want to add two sequent hits together the scale virtual machine will get them from memory and add together your two secret values um, note that for all nonlinear operation on secret data types um, these operations are translated by the Mamba compiler into a set of linear instructions and pre-processing consumptions that's basically all what the scale virtual machine knows how to do uh, you may see at the bottom of this slide that some protocol uh, that sound usually trivial such as comparison can become quite expensive in the context of MPC. Indeed, when you want to compare uh, two KB, k-bit values, it takes approximately four times k multiplication, and that takes uh, log two k plus one rounds. And for the uh, equality test, it takes about k multiplications in log two k rounds. even if most of the pre-processing consumption is done under the hood by the protocols already known to the Mamba compiler such as multiplication, division, comparison um, the programmer also has the, habil the ability to request directly some pre-processing material using those commands so as you can see you can ask for random triples, random squares or random bits Here is a first uh, non-intuitive example of programming in MPC. Say you want to branch on B to assign either um, uh, Y or Z to X. In traditional Python, you'd write the if statement as presented here. However, here what happens is that the compiler will assign a S int register to B right and at execution time scale will find will, will fill it with whatever value you put 
in inside the brackets, inside the parentheses. Uh, then in the next step, the compiler will execute the Python if on B and compare the register and not its value to the Python integer one. Then therefore this piece of code does not make a lot of sense because you're comparing a register to, an, to a Python integer. From an MPC perspective also there is an issue because uh, here you define B to be a secret and then you ask your program to branch on the value B so if you knew at execution time which branch to take then you'd know the value of the secret B which kind of contradicts the whole idea behind MPC. Now, if you are somehow certain that B is either zero or one, but still a secret, the alternative is to explicit the behavior of your uh, X value by uh, writing this equation or this equation, which are equivalent. Note that uh, you don't actually have to write this down, but there are special keyword in there is a special keyword in in Mumba to do exactly that. Um, so even the writing everything as an arithmetic circuit is a solution to MPC. It is often not the fastest. In the following, we will walk through how one would go about coding the function uh, to get the least significant bit of a secret x. And we'll also see how to test whether a secret value is equal to zero. And in both cases, we will use the same trick that is uh, very common in the MPC literature and which basically relies on the fact that it's okay to open a value if it looks random enough. So let's take the least significant bit example. So in this example, we're going to have an X in the underlying finite field and X is a, a secret value. And what we want to compute is this B, also a secret value holding uh, li the least significant bit of, of X. So to do so, what we want to do is take a random mask R for which we know the bit decomposition and we want to uh, then mask the x values that we have using this r and then we can open open this because basically this c is a one-time pad of x and then using this, this c in the clear we can actually compute the least significant bit of of c and XOR it with the least significant bit of our mask r of which we knew the bit decomposition by construction <laughs> Um, the only thing is that for this to work, we have to be sure that C is actually hiding uh, X and we also want to avoid any wraparound, uh, wraparound P uh, in, in this addition X plus R. So to do that, we have to make sure that X is bounded by 2 to the K and then we have to take R to be K plus K per uh, bit long. And this way, we make sure that uh, X plus R is, uh, is close enough to uh, uniformly random. So that's the noise joining technique that I described in the, the, the previous slide. Okay, let's see how you code this in member. So you first define the least significant bit function, uh, which takes as an argument X, K and Kappa. First step is you want to construct R from its bit decomposition. So you first ask uh, the bits themselves, secret bits, by using this command sint.getRandomBit and you want k plus kappa of them to make sure that you correctly hide the x value which is uh, on k bits, right? And so then you compute your R value from these bits. So that's pretty straightforward. And you use your mask to mask x and reveal uh, this expression. So now c is is a random looking value uh, of which we can use in further computation. Um, so what you want to do is to retrieve the least significant bit of c by computing this in the clear. And, and that's doable because we've just revealed this value. And the last thing is now that you have C0, the LSB of C, and R0, which is the LSB of R, 
you want to compute the XOR of those two values to end up with the LSB of X. And so now this expression is how you compute the XOR function in the prime field. Note that um, as a user, you can also just call this bit decompose function, which is implemented in the compiler, and just let the compiler do the hard work for you, because like it need you need some experience in order to get the most efficient programs. So let's look at another example which uses the same noise learning technique. So here we want to compute whether a value a secret value x is equal to zero, and as before we want to get the result also as a, as a secret. To do so, we are going to use the same kind of techniques as before. So first we want to construct a mask, a mask R, which is big enough to hide X. Here again, uh, X is defined on K bits, and so we want R to be uh, defined on K plus kappa bits to approximate a uniformly random value C when you open X plus R. And then in the, last, in the last step, we want to compute whether c is equal to r mod 2 to the k, because if x is equal to 0, then c is equal to r. Okay, so let's see how you write this in member. So you define the equal zero function, which takes in x, k, and kappa, and you construct your r as before by asking for k plus kappa random bits. Um, you then mask your x value using this big random r and you reveal the sum of those two values uh, and, and call this c. Now c, as we've seen before, is close enough to uniform so that it doesn't reveal anything about x. Now that we have access to c in the clear, we can actually ask for its bit decomposition uh, for free. And now that we have access to both the bit decomposition of c and the bit decomposition of r, we can bit by bit uh, check whether or not they are equal. And so this is what this GI um, value holds. It holds the XOR between the C bits and the R bits, and actually takes a note of, of this computation. And why do we want this? Because if X is equal to zero, then C is equal to R, and thus all the GI are gonna be equal to one. And so what we want to return is actually whether or not x is equal to zero, so whether or not all the gi are equal to one. And so this is what this last loop computes. No, note that because the air bits are actually uh, s ints, these gi are also s ints, and so this res value is also gonna be an s int. And so we do end up with uh, a secret bit telling us whether or not x is equal to zero. It's important to keep in mind the cost of your protocol. So here we have one opening, which is the opening of x plus r at the beginning of the protocol, and we have k minus one multiplications uh, at the end of the protocol. We also ask for k plus kappa random bits to construct our r value. And we have at least log to k communication rounds to compute this k minus one multiplications. Note that in the code that we've seen before, we actually have k uh, communication rounds, but you could easily uh, make this log to k. Uh, note also that the same protocol can be done in constant round. Uh, as we've seen before, all those protocols and much more are, are already available in Mumba, so you don't really have to code them yourself. 